Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover creating UUIDs in Rails 7. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, a UUID is going to be sort of a uh, unique identifier to an extent. Uh, generally speaking, your goal is to, to create a string that you use for your IDs as opposed to the generic number uh, with the goal of having something where you won't have very many collisions. You could still run into a collision, I guess, theoretically. Uh, but your goal is to have something that is largely unique, which gives you the ability to like pre-generate them, maybe create them on the front end, and then try to insert them into the database with like far fewer uh, concerns for collisions. Now, because they start off rather big, uh, you can run into some issues with the size of your database. Maybe you're taking up more data than you would otherwise. It's harder to keep it in memory uh, because they're strings. You might sort them slower. So there are performance concerns to uh, take into consideration, but overall you have the, uh, the benefit of it being largely unique and you have the benefit of, let's say if you had an e-commerce application and you don't want your competitors to know that you're generating 50 orders a day, if you're generating orders that look like this, where it's like slash order slash and then this number, uh, it's kind of hard to tell that 50 orders have been made today. Meanwhile, if you just generate based on like IDs or their integers, for example, and you go from order number 201 in the morning to order number 251 at night, it's pretty easy for me to tell that you're generating about 50 orders a day. So in, in that case, you might be leaking some sensitive information that you don't want to share with the rest of the world. So you might want to use like a UUID for those. But okay. Most people that are watching this video probably know what the UUID is. I just want to make sure that people are like aware of, of what they're useful for uh, in, the, in the case that you're seeing this when the video first comes out. So to actually create these, it's a couple steps we have to follow. The first one, of course, is we have to make a Rails app. I'm going to call mine video. And we're actually going to use a uh, Postgres database for this. So we're going to be typing uh, dash D PostgreSQL right here. This is just going to set it up for us. And the reason why we're using PSQL is because it has a uh, extension you can use, which I think is called like PG Crypto. We'll talk about that in a second. And PG Crypto will let you uh, set up the UUID generation for you. If you're using a different database, you might have to look into what extensions are available for that database. Okay, so I'm gonna CD into our video. And just to test things, I'm gonna go ahead and do a Rails G scaffold. I'll create those posts. I'll give each post a title and a body of type text. And then I'll just go ahead and I'll hit enter. We're gonna generate this. It's gonna generate with a standard integer ID and we'll just mess around with it. Now, because I already have a database created, I do have to do a Rails DB drop just to get rid of the database I was using in the demo application. Once that's done, we'll just go ahead and do a Rails DB colon create to create our database. And then we can do a rails db colon migrate command to migrate it. And the reason why, oops, the reason why I'm doing this is uh, because I wanna show you what happens if you already have an existing database and you try to run these commands. Let me go ahead and type a code dot as well. Uh, because we have to generate a migration to set this up, we can run into the issue where we already have some uh, identifiers created using the integer IDs or whatever. And in that case, we have to change the order of the migrations uh, from, from like the standard way of doing it. So I'm gonna come over to our slash posts. I'm gonna create a new post, call it test case, and it's gonna go to slash post slash one. Now, if we come into our DB and our migrate, we can see we have one migration here where we have a create table for posts that just has a title and a body. Now let's say you wanted to change this to use a UUID. The first thing you'd have to do is generate a new migration. So we'll do that right now. We'll just type Rails, we hit F11, G migration, and we'll just call this enable UUID. We're just gonna generate an empty migration. Then we'll come over here and we'll try to change this. So if we come into our def change, we can type enable underscore extension. And then inside of quotes, we want to enable the PG crypto extension. And now if we try to do a rails db colon migrate command, this should, uh, it looks like that worked, 
But if we try to do a Rails S, uh, if we come over here and we do a new post, so I'll say test two with a case, you'll see this is still going to slash post slash two. So to actually change this, you have to change your create table posts to be something like, uh, what is it, like an ID set to UUID, something like that. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type rails db colon, uh, I guess, drop, which is what a lot of people end up doing. And then when they go to do a rails db colon uh, create and then a migrate afterwards, they get to this step and they run into issues. And thankfully we ran into the exact issue we were looking for. Uh, effectively, it can't generate the UUID because the migration that tells it it's able to do so happens after the creation of the post migration. So to fix this, we can just rename our enable UUID migration to happen before the first instance where we're using this other type of ID. Now, if we do a rails db colon migrate command, this will cause it to migrate appropriately. We can then do a rails s, we can go to slash post, create a new post, we'll say test in case, create post. And now we have this random nonsense appearing in our URL. So in this case, we have our ID appearing as we would expect it to. Now we can of course come into like our rails console and we can do something like post.first we can still grab it that way. We just can't do something like post.find one anymore because we don't have an ID of one. We'd have to have this entire ID on hand. So that is something to consider. You shouldn't be doing these finds for an ID of one to begin with, but if you are, that's something to be aware of. Now, the next thing we can talk about is how do we handle like a uh, parent and child relationship? Let's give each of these posts a comment, for example. Well, to do that, we can do a Rails G model. We'll just call it comment. And we're not really gonna do anything fancy here. We're just going to give it a body of type text. We'll go ahead and we'll hit enter. We're not gonna do a reference here because if we come into our create comments, the first thing we have to do is change this to be an ID of UUID. Now you don't necessarily have to do this, but maybe you wanna hide how many comments you're getting per day. But the other thing you have to do is you have to make sure that you have a t.uuid for the post ID. Now, generally this will be created for you. You'll have a post ID on here that's of type integer by default. But in this case, because we have a UUID for our posts, we need to make sure we're specifying that this is of type UUID. And now if we do a rails db colon migrate command to migrate our database, we can then do a rails c and we can try something like uh, post.first, which exists right there. We can try to do a dot comments, but we don't have that set up in our model. So what we can instead do is we can do a comment dot create where we give it a post ID of uh, post.first.id and we can give it a body of test that will create our comment. So we can see here that our uh, comment now has a parent of whatever this ID is with a body of test and it also has its own ID here that's uh, slightly nonsensical. If we do a post.first we can see that this ID is the same as our comments ID. So in this case we'd be using the same type of setup. You just have to be aware that you have to set it up uh, with a UUID in your comments if you're trying to have that association created for you. But okay, what happens if you go to, let's say create, um, I don't know, tags or, or categories, right? And you want those to have like a unique ID, but you're getting kind of tired of having to uh, change your, your migration every single time. Well, to do this, you can come into your config, your initializers, right click new file. You can largely call this whatever you'd like to. Uh, maybe you wanna call it something like, um, I don't know, on start. Uh, or uh, in this case, I'm gonna call it a generators.rb. And then in the generators.rb file, you can just tell it to uh, set the uh, ORM to use UUIDs. And then hopefully GitHub Copilot will figure out what I mean by this, and it looks like it has. So in this case, it's going to call rails.application.config.generators do g, and then it's gonna call g.orm, active record, and it's gonna set the primary key type to UUID. 
So let's go ahead and let's try to generate a scaffold with the setting. We'll say Rails G scaffold. We'll create a category scaffold where each one has a name. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll hit enter. And now let's do a Rails DB colon migrate command to start the server with a Rails S. And now you can see right here, it says create tables, categories, but the uh, ID has these braces and then it's set to a UUID. So if we come into our migration, our DB migrate, this last one here is for our categories. You can see right here, maybe if I full screen it, it'll let me uh, expand more, create categories.rb. You can see it creates the tables for categories and automatically sets up the ID to be a UUID. So in this case, it is doing the heavy lifting for us and saving us the five seconds that it takes to come in here and change this, uh, which we tell ourselves is worth the sacrifice of uh, having to create an entire extra generator. Now, that's roughly all that I have for you, but there are ways, I guess I should say, to uh, go in and migrate a table from, let's say, a standard ID to a UUID, and I think I think I saw a blog post that covered this. So let's do a Rails UUID uh, migrate table search. And I'll see if I can find, I think it was this one. So let me full screen this. If we come down here uh, to, where is it? Down here. How to migrate a table from integer to UUID primary keys. You can see here that the approach is to effectively uh, do like a, a rename and a swap where you create a new UUID column, you then rename your old ID to just an integer ID or like old underscore ID. So that it's no longer the primary key. And then you set the new UUID column to be the uh, primary key. So this is roughly the chain of events. I'll have a link to this blog post in the video description. It does cover a lot of what I've talked about today as well. Um, but this section right here, I didn't really have a good way to demo. I guess I could have come up with something a bit more contrived, but at the end of the day, it's already been covered. So I thought I'd just point to it. Um, basically you're just doing the old hot swap. Like if you're trying to replace a jar file in Java, uh, you know what you do, you grab the old jar file, rename it jar.old, and then you put in the new jar file and then you hope everything works. And if it doesn't, you can always go back to the old jar file. It seems to be the approach here. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there is a uh, clear cut way to, to clean this up. Uh, but this uh, Paul Urbanek uh, blog post has a, uh, a way to work around this if you need to. So if you are interested in migrating to UUIDs in your uh, current application, they, uh, they definitely talk about the migrations. They also talk about their contributions to uh, fixing some bugs that happened in uh, the, I guess, prior to Rails 6 implementation of UUIDs. But yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Um, I know it's always hard to sort of wrap your brain around concepts like this. Uh, for me, it wasn't much of a issue with the actual concept of using a UUID. It was more just um, trying to like initially migrate a database i think it was for one of the uh one of the api videos we did where uh, i didn't have this line right here in my migrations and because of that it uh, i just couldn't figure out how to get them to work so i thought i'd sit down and just learn how these work and while learning how to actually do this from scratch i thought it'd be good to teach it to you guys just in case it's helpful to someone who's watching this but yeah that's gonna do it for this video hopefully this was helpful and hopefully i'll uh, see you in the next one